Atomstack has a 36 watt laser engraver that's selling for under $750. That makes it the cheapest 36 watt engraver currently available. So I tested the machine to check if Atomstack sacrificed on quality or if it's going to get you the biggest bang for your buck. But before we get to the machine details, check out some of these cool engraving projects that I made with the engraver. I got some nice results on tiles, MDF, plywood, and even aluminum. If you're interested in seeing the full machine details and the up-to-date prices, you can find that in the link below. So the machine is called the Atomstack X30 Pro. And starting with the frame, on the first glance, the structure reminds me a lot of the cheaper 5 to 10 watt machines. But after assembling the machine together, I can clearly see that the parts are very sturdy and durable, made from solid steel. Still, you can see that Atomstack tried to reduce costs on aesthetics while trying to maximize machine productivity. The legs aren't exactly anything to boast about. They don't look great and you can't change their height, but they are stable. The good news is that the machine does come with limit switches, which are quite important to prevent lost steps and machine safety. It has one on the Y and one on the X axis. The drive belt is a single layer drive belt, which is not common with higher end engravers. Instead of a double layer drive belt, a single one can cause an increase in backlash if the laser model gets too heavy, which is normally what happens with a stronger laser module. As for machine assembly, it's not too complicated. There are around 12 screws you need to put in, but the assembly instructions could definitely be more clear. If you get the machine, you might end up wanting to watch this quick assembly done here. You also get extra accessories like Allen keys, a USB drive with microchip, an aluminum plate, a power supply, and a super cool air pump which we will talk about later. What I like most about the Atom Stack is that it has Wi-Fi and an exterior monitor that gets plugged and attached to the front of the machine. For some reason, all other companies decided that monitors on the machine aren't necessary. The monitor allows you to move the machine around, choose the project desired, change the speed, power, and tells you how much percent the project is complete. Controlling the machine is easily done via USB cable into your machine, but the cable was very short so I decided to try Wi-Fi instead. After a little bit of brain work, I managed to connect the machine to my PC through Wi-Fi, so then I could easily send the projects after framing them to the machine, then just use the monitor to get the projects engraved. So even after connecting the machine and the device through Wi-Fi, I still wasn't able to directly engrave through Lightburn. But I was able to control the machine through Lightburn and do all the framing, it's just starting the job was not consistent. The solution is not too hard, all I had to do was control everything through Lightburn, save the G-code and send it directly through Wi-Fi to the machine and press start. And keep in mind that Atomstack never said that you can use Wi-Fi this way in the first place. The last things to know are 1. The maximum speed of the machine can reach 500 mm per second which is above average. 2. The laser focus spot is 0.1 mm, which is average for this price range. 3. The machine has a cool leveling tool that is hard to lose that is placed onto the machine to adjust your height for each project. And 4. The laser model height adjustment cannot get any easier. Just loosen one knob, adjust the height and tighten it back up. Ok, so let's get a general idea of what each material speed and power settings are. On the left is speed, millimeters per second, on the top is percent power. Starting with wood and MDF, it really depends on the type and thickness of wood you have. Here's a general idea on 2 mm wood and MDF. When engraving aluminum, even maximum speed at 10% power proved to be great. On stone, best results were at around maximum speed 50% power. Stainless steel really depends on how shiny it is, the depth of cut and other factors. Here are different results achieved. If you noticed, most of these engravings had best results at maximum speed. And that's very important because if you're trying to get a strong laser, you're doing it to get faster engravings or deeper engravings. 
If you pay attention to the details and we zoom in on them, you can see that some boxes aren't perfect and have some very small deviations. Although very hard to see, depending on your project, you might find this important. But still, I was able to engrave on this MDF a chili pepper at maximum speed and different power levels. And this is how it came out. I painted it too, so it looks spicy. I also engraved a T-Rex on MDF with maximum speed again. And you can see the different depths of color. The picture almost looks 3D. Even with aluminum, maximum speed, I didn't notice any issues with these chess pieces engraved. There doesn't seem to be any backlash here. Look at these super awesome tile engravings made. We have a pumpkin engraved at half speed 20% power, and the engraver managed to show his evil side. There's also Goku engraved on blue painted tile too. I can already see an infinite amount of possibilities with this engraver, its results are awesome. It's giving full details and full color gradients. I also engraved a fox on stainless steel and a panda image on stone. The panda image was okay, but this shows that 0.1mm laser spots slash 254 dpi isn't great for small pictures, but is more than enough for any vector images and large pictures like the tiles. Anything under 7cm is going to start looking a little less clear. But with everything in mind, this machine had zero faults while engraving even at full speeds. But what about cutting? How deep can this 36 watt engraver go? Let's start with some 3mm plywood and see how that goes. I tried cutting out piano pieces and assembling them, but I had to go all the way down to 6mm per second speed and 100% power. I expected I could go a little faster with this machine, but still I have to say I'm very impressed, because the accuracy was exactly 3mm on the dot. I was able to slot the pieces into their places perfectly. Ok, ok, that's good, but 3mm isn't much, we need to test on a bigger thickness. So I tried to cut out some very thick 1.8cm cherry wood, and yep, it was a little too hard for the machine to handle, but it got pretty close. I could take a cube out using the perfect settings, but Atomstack claims it can cut 2cm. It's true I use 1.8cm cherry wood, which is quite dense, but it's still sad that it couldn't cut it smoothly. But it can cut 1.5cm, which is not bad. I also cut some acrylic out with ease and got this little piece of text saying that you, my friend, are the boss. So, cutting accuracy is very high, and cutting power is around average. Before we get to the conclusion, the limit switches did their job fine. I wasn't worried that the machine is gonna ram into a wall at full speed. The machine has home safety features like an emergency button to stop the machine in case of a fire. And if you've ever been around an air pump for a high-end engraver, you know that it gets pretty noisy. But the Atomstack X30 air pump was strong, yet not as loud as other engraver air pumps, which my ears appreciate. And another important thing, you definitely cannot cut or engrave intense projects with this machine without an enclosure box. A lot of projects that I made and you will make produce a high amount of smoke and toxins. That's where the enclosure box comes into play. This is how the room looks with only a window open for ventilation on a tough project. Pretty smoky. And this is the same project but with an enclosure box. If you plan on working in a room where the engraver is operating, you definitely need good ventilation. I've been using Creality's enclosure box for a while and it's been working great on all the laser engravers I've tested, so I'm pretty happy with the design. I have a link for the box in the description below. So this engraver is a mix between the lower and higher end machines. Normally 36 watt machines cost 1k to 1.5k, but this machine got it at $750. So you are getting great power for a great price, even if you're missing on some qualities instead. I would rate this machine as very good. Make sure to subscribe to see me compare this machine with other higher and lower end machines in a test. And once again, you can find the machine details in the links below. That's it from my side, and have a great day!